Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Today I'm very happy to be back home in Southwest Florida. It is 81 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 26 degrees Celsius. Just a lovely day, it's great. A little bit of a breeze. This is just wonderful, and my guys love it. My orchids really love it here under those under these conditions. Uh, today, what I want to do is talk to you about something a little bit different. I call today Ask a Scientist, and what I want you to do is if you have questions, uh, science questions about orchids or plants, uh, please feel free to leave a comment on my channel and I'd be happy to try to answer it. Uh, again, my training and background is uh, I have my PhD in plant physiology, so I'm a plant scientist. I've taught uh, plant physiology, plant biochemistry, mo plant molecular biology, and uh, plant breeding and genetics. Um, I, so I know a little bit about these areas. If you have a question that isn't within these areas, I'm happy to ask someone and then relay that information uh, to you. I'm, I'm very, I, I can do this, I can contact them, and, and most of the people that I contact, even the companies that I contact when I, have, when I have a question for them, they answer me, and it's nice to get those types of answers. Uh, and the reason I say all of this is because I've been looking online. I look uh, on YouTube, for example, under, under orchids, and I get just a whole array of different types of things, different information, some of which is just not very good from a scientific standpoint. And so what I'd like to do is, is present to you uh, for any questions you ask. Uh, and I also, you know, if there's, if there's enough questions, I'm happy to put another video together to explain to you some of the aspects of plant sciences as it relates to orchids or general propagation uh, of plants. Uh, what I want to do today is, ta is, first of all, show you some new blooms in my garden, and then I want to tell you a little bit uh, of a story about what I learned from my <laughs> YouTube searches on orchids. So let's take a look at some of the blooms first. And this is a, uh, I don't know if you can see it, this is a, a nice cattleya bloom and this is from this is a, a new plant first bloom that i've seen on this plant and this is haruka uh, kansaki volcano queen and this is a, a home depot purchase and i bought it because it was an incredibly vigorous plant um and it but I, it wasn't blooming at the time but it was a great price so i actually picked it up and divided i have another plant that isn't blooming yet and and what i like about this cattleya and most of my cattleyas is the fragrance that's associated with it. This is an incredibly sweet, uh, very brightly colored uh, Cattleya bloom, and it, it's wonderful. I can smell it from here, just, just standing here. So that's the first bloom. Second bloom I want to share with you is right here, and this is a uh, Catacetum. And this is a, a Catacetum, it's from Fred Clark, and it is Black Pearl. And it's one of the few black flowering orchids. And this also is just wonderfully fragrant. This is, was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, well, it shouldn't have been a surprise. It's, the description is that it's a very fragrant and black uh, orchid. So the, uh, the fragrance, it's kind of like an herby, um, soapy, sweet smell, which is, it, it's, it's actually really nice. So, it, and the color of this, as you can tell, is is just beautiful it's not huge flowers but for a catacetum it's pretty nice and i have my, one of my other uh catacetums fred, from fred clark is blooming again it put out a first bloom spike a couple of months ago but it's actually blooming again i'm not going to show that to you today but what i do want to show you is this part of the plant so the leaves are starting to senesce and and this is going into dormancy and this specific um black pearl and many of those in his After Dark collection, um, the, they, well, all, all of them actually go into dormancy. But this one blooms uh, either right as it's going into dormancy or right at the end of it. Um, and so that's when it puts out its, its bloom spike. So these yellow leaves, normally they're not like that. They're, as you might imagine, they're nice green leaves. I lost two leaves uh, this morning. They just fell off. And once these go into dormancy, you withhold water from it a bit. 
um, and then it'll put out new growth in the spring. But this is just, this is nice because I haven't seen this before. It, again, it's just a really nice, uh, really nice bloom. And I'm really happy that I finally got to see uh, what this looked like. Uh, also behind me, what I have uh, is an Oncidium right here, is an Oncidium that blooms <laughs> all the time. Uh, th and it's also fragrant uh, as well. So this yellow, and I don't know what uh, what what the uh, the type of what uh, type of um, plant this is, or what type what the name of the plant is. But this is an oncidium that just pretty much blooms um, constantly, and so it's got another bloom spike. Uh, I also have one of my other oncidiums, uh, Sherry Baby, that's putting out another bloom spike uh, as well. Uh, one of the other things, got cattleyas there. I, I have dendrobiums all over the place that are blooming, but I don't want to focus on that today. I just wanted to share some of those blooms because I, I'm excited, but I want to tell you a story about what happened when I searched YouTube for orchids. And what I came across, as you might imagine, were a large number of hits, a large number of, of people who present on YouTube on, on orchids. And they are, they talk about the perfect potting mix and the perfect growth conditions and this and that. And, and what you have to do is remember that a lot of the conditions that you grow your orchids under depend on where you have it. If you have them outside or inside, if it's dry or wet conditions, and that dictates a lot of things that you do with your orchids. So pay attention to that and, and you have to decide for yourself, and I'm sorry, even though there are people offering advice, you have to figure out for yourself what conditions are best for you. And as a scientist, what you have to do is try a few different things and see what, what works best. But back to my story, the main thing that I came across was a lot of people making fertilizer recommendations on, on orchids. And there's a lot of orchid fertilizers that are out there, and I want to go over some of those with you uh, today. One of, the, one of the channels that I came across had a huge number of subscribers uh, and a huge number of views as well as far as orchid fertilizers go. And what this person recommended was using tea to fertilize orchids. And as, as an orchid grower and a tea lover, I think tea is great. like this. So this is, this is Chinese green tea and this stuff is just great. I have it most mornings. I go back and forth between black tea and green tea. But the, it, it goes in me. I do not recommend that you f use it to fertilize your orchids. It's an extract from the leaves of Camellia sinensis, of, of tea. Uh, in most, there are herbal teas or other types of teas as well, but most teas come from the, the tea plant. And, and to, to say that you're, as a scientist, to say that you're going to use this as a fertilizer for orchids, that doesn't make too much sense to me. And, and there may be some minimal minerals and nutrients and other things, lots of phenolics, lots of other compounds that are extracted from these dry tea leaves. Uh, and sometimes for black tea, sometimes those leaves are, are fermented, so you get yet additional products out of that. But what you have, you know, to, to say that you're going to use this in place of regular fertilizers, to me, doesn't make too much sense. All right, so, uh, you know, if you want to try it, if it's working for you, obviously, stay with this approach. But it would be surprising if you were to compare that to use of standard fertilizers that you would find the tea works better than the standard fertilizers that actually have, have been used for many years for fertilization of, of orchids. All right, uh, one of the other things that I found when I looked on YouTube was that there are people that are recommending orchid specific fertilizers. And, and the reality of this is that people, you can buy orchid specific fertilizers and you pay a little bit extra for those. But the reality of this is that most of the fertilizers are pretty similar. The fertilizers contain NPK, which is uh, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. Those are the three main ingredients that are in all of the fertilizers that you, that you will buy, except for tea. Um, and, but what you also should know is that there are other elements that are in there as well. So those are the, the NPK are the major elements, macro elements, and then there's all the other micro elements that are in there that also plants need for growth and that can contribute to growth at various levels. So most of fertilizers contain those. All right, so what I wanna do is go over some of these fertilizers, 
that I haven't that I have here and that I bought and that I actually use. The best thing to do, just so you know, is to buy fertilizers and to, and use different fertilizers and kind of mix them up depending on what you're trying to do. All right, for most cases, just an even balance of NPK is fine or a good general type of fertilizer is fine. This is a fertilizer that if you look on the label says it is the MSU fertilizer. And this is a, this is something that was uh, supposedly, that, that people call it the magic fertilizer for orchids. And MSU stands for Michigan State University, which is not my university. Have good colleagues there, great place. But this is the MSU fertilizer formulation. And, and this uh, is actually a 13315 and PK, which is a nice balance. And it was developed by the people at Michigan State University as a general fertilizer. It wasn't developed for orchids, it was developed, there were actually two different formulations they developed uh, for two different, depending on their water source at the time, for all the plants that they were growing in the greenhouses at Michigan State University. The reality of this is that the orchid people took this and went a little crazy and now it's the magic fertilizer for orchids. But when you read the articles written by the MSU people, um, the reality of it is that it wasn't developed for orchids. And more importantly, orchids were not even plants that they were growing in the greenhouses at the time when they did the work. And I've looked at the papers and I've looked at the opinion pieces and it's just been taken and it's great. You know, I use it and it works fine, but it's not orchid specific. It's just, a, it's just one of the many formulations and there are now even more formulations of this MSU fertilizer because people think that there's something magical associated with it. Okay, let's take a look at some other fertilizers. And so this is a another orchid fertilizer and this says developed by orchid specialists and endorsed by the American Orchid Society of which I'm a, a member. And this is a 2014-13 uh, NPK levels. And, and this also, this works fine and this works well, uh, and, but it's just a standard fertilizer. And this is a good general fertilizer. You can see, you can see the NPK levels are a little bit more balanced, uh, which is fine. Uh, there's another formulation also uh, put out by the same company that also says developed by orchid, um, you know, orchid specialists and, um, and endorsed by the American Orchid Society, and this is 113515, which is a, a bloom enhancement or a bloom booster. So it has a little bit uh, higher levels of phosphorus in it, and that's supposed to be beneficial during bloom time. And, and again, what I, what I do is I interview people that are successful in growing orchids that have great blooms and I ask them what they use and they say that they use mixes of different types of fertilizers. Most, many of them say to use this right before, they know when the plants are about to bloom and they say to use the bloom booster that has higher phosphorus levels right before they know the plant is gonna bloom. Again, they keep records, they know when the plant's gonna bloom and they, and they use this beforehand. And again, this is fine, this is good fertilizer, this is fine. It has the NPK, also I should read the other elements are magnesium, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. So this is just, and, but all of these have that. And so they have the good, the good balance of things. One of the growers that I, that I really have a lot of respect for recommends this. And this is Jax, and I've talked to people, uh, growers, uh, and people that are successful with flowers, and they, they, they also say they use jacks. And this is 20, 20, 20, if you can read it. So a nice, even balance of all the, the different major elements that are in here. Um, and again, again, what most people do, use this, and this is good as a general all-around fertilizer. They use this before it's bloomed, they may add something else, but you can mix different types of fertilizers. Uh, and that's fine. And you can, you can, if you want to throw some tea in there, go ahead. Um, but there's all different types of fertilizers uh, that you can use. Uh, this is not orchid specific. As you can see, the different plants, I don't know, are there, no, there's no orchids on there. Look, see, no orchids. But this is just a general, and, and all, all plants are enough similar, the same, so that they use the same fertilizer. 
Okay, the last thing that I want to share with you is uh, is this fertilizer, and this is Miracro. Miracle Grow. These are the guys. These make these guys make a lot of different fertilizers, and this is again an all-purpose. What it says is an all-purpose plant food, and this is twenty. It doesn't say on the front, but this is twenty-four eight sixteen. So a good balance, kind of in between a lot of the ones that we've uh, that we've been over. Um, and I use this. I actually use this the most, and I use it the most because. It it's, it's the cheapest of all these things. You can get these at any of the big box stores and it works great and it's a big company, very reliable. Um, I use their potting mix. I use a number of their different uh, Miracle. It's just Scott's Miracle Grow products, and I use a number of different products. And this is what I use the most because it, it works the best for me. I should mention when you use this, uh, there's a couple of different approaches that you can use. So you can um, you can use constant feed, which means you use the lower amount of the recommended fertilizer every time that you water, or you can use uh, once you know a, a high strength. And when you use high strength, you only use this every at every fourth watering or something like this. So you can use different strengths of these fertilizers depending on what's going on. I do, for, for the most part, I do constant feed when I'm using fertilizers. But the thing that's interesting about this is that I, you know, it, it, and they all, again, they all have the same components. This fertilizer, I put it in this container when I'm using it, this fertilizer is blue. All right, and again, I went online and I looked to see why this is blue. And the reality of this is, let me show you, Peter's, I'm sorry, Jack's, blue. Here's another of uh, the orchid formulations, blue. All right, so it's blue. Why is it blue? You look online and a lot of people post online that it's blue because it contains copper sulfate. Well, first of all, these these fertilizers contain, they, they can contain copper sulfate, they can contain also a chelated or kind of a protected or coated copper. Copper sulfate is blue. Copper sulfate as a concentrated chemical in the, in the bottle when you buy it is blue. This it's not, this is bluer than what you normally, this is about as blue or bluer than what you get with copper sulfate. The reality of this is that I, I, I didn't believe that this was from the copper in, that, that's actually part of the fertilizer. And copper, copper is at very low concentrations because plants need it, but at very low levels. So I contacted the good people at Miracle Grow, and I told them who I was, and I told them I had a YouTube channel, and I asked them, oops, I asked them, why is this stuff so blue? And, and, and I said, the reports that there's copper sulfate in there, and I can't believe that there's that much copper sulfate in here. So the good people at, at Scott's Miracle Grow, they, I mean, and they have people that, that their job is to answer questions that come in online. And so the good people at Miracle Grow, they replied, and they said that, they do add blue colorant to the fertilizer. And it's, so you can tell if you've added it, and you can also tell how concentrated uh, the fertilizer is when you apply it by how intense the blue coloration is in the actual fertilizer. Uh, the blue colorant is a, it's a food grade um, dye. So it, and it's present at very low levels, but it does give this bright blue coloration. So it's not from the copper sulfate. If you look online, you'll still see that is, there's a, there's just a blue, it, it's a simply a, a blue dye. Uh, that's in there. And again, most of these things, I haven't, I've only contacted the people at Miracle Grow, but I'm sure that because all these other ones also are blue, I, I would assume that there's also blue colorant in the other ones, but I don't know. Uh, and and those, those individuals probably should be contacted uh, as well. So um, that's pretty much all I have for today. I just wanted to, uh, to give you an overview of things. Um, I answered some of my own questions about fertilizer as I uh, prepared today and as I was looking into things. Uh, if there are any questions that you have or any comp, please put them on my comments page, any comments, anything that you have. If you love using tea as a fertilizer, I'd love to hear about that and uh, I'd be happy to reply to that as well. Uh, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, ask me questions, uh, comments, post comments. Uh, happy to hear from all of you. And happy propagating.